Hey folks, today we're gonna redo the 20 gallon long and I'm gonna experiment with something called anoxic filtration. It's all coming up right after this. Hey YouTube, this is Pack Tech. Now, I had mentioned a couple of weeks ago that I was having some issues with this tank and I'd like to redo it. Well, even if I wasn't having some issues, I'd like to redo it. The plants have kind of gone a, all gone the, <laughs> their own way. Uh, I'm totally out of control of the way things are going on in here. And uh, right next to this nice, beautifully, uh, newly aquascaped, beautiful tank, I'd like to have something a little bit prettier, uh, you know, as an example of the work that I do. So originally I'd planned to mimic another YouTuber that I know, uh, his name's Father Fish. No, I don't know him, but I know of him. And I've seen lots of his videos. He does these thick substrate videos, uh, or basically he's a big advocate of having a really thick, like a big, thick cap on top of your substrate. And I've seen him mentioned to several other people, like once you try, you'll never go back. And it was all very tempting. But I didn't want to turn this into like a mega low boy aquarium <laughs> by pushing the substrate up and up and up. And, uh... I came across one of my viewers suggestions. So many, many times as I mention things uh, in my videos, uh, my viewers will offer different suggestions. Sometimes they're very helpful, sometimes less so. But this person in particular offered something that I've never heard of before uh, called anoxic filtration. This is a, a subject that was put forward by Dr. Kevin Novak. And he's, uh, he's been around for a little while making videos. He, I think he took about a two year break and he's just recently put out a couple of more videos uh, centered around the use of a plenum. So there are a lot of different ways to do a plenum. Uh, one of the ways he suggested uh, I decided to go with and that's to use an under gravel filter. No, wait, 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 come back, come back, come back, come back. Honestly, I know it's old school. I know it's weird, but, but we're going to try this and I think it's going to work. Now, I know you think I've gone crazy. Uh, things like this are very, very old school. This is, uh, I was a kid when they invented these, and you see, can see how old I am now. Uh, we're not gonna use this in the traditional way, not even close. What we wanna do is create a slow, slow moving area, not a quick moving area, uh, underneath the tank to create anoxic conditions. I'm not going to go into like a whole lot of detail about anoxic conditions. I am not a doctor. Uh, I am going to include a link to Dr. Novak's videos, his channel, basically. And you can, you can go through there and decide for yourself uh, if you think it's worth a try. I'm going to try it because why not? That's kind of what I like to do is try new things. And this is something that I, I haven't seen before. And usually this is a terrible idea for planted tanks. Uh, and the reason is because the water runs, if you do this the way it's meant to be set up, if you set it up as intended, the water goes very quickly through the substrate and does not provide uh, ideal conditions for plant growth. What we're going to do is we're going to slow it way down. And uh, what Dr. Novak did on his video is he made a very short lift tube out of here, and when, once we pull this out, we can talk about it more, but he made a very short lift tube, put an air stone in, and just made sure that the, the lift was uh, very slow, uh, the slow moving conditions underneath. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this, uh, this tube over possibly to the filter, or, may, or maybe into or through the filter, and just kind of put it uh, into the foam filter I've got on the side. I've got kind of a specialized tank I'm not even sure that this is gonna fit without me having to cut into it a little bit. But I'm gonna provide an opportunity for water to flow out of this, but I'm not gonna do anything to kind of like really move the water through quickly. And hopefully that'll create those slow moving conditions that you need to create the anoxic filtration. Some of these fish will be moved over to other tanks. Other ones are gonna go into a bucket, maybe with a sponge filter. This takes longer than a day to do. And all the plants are going to come out and get in a bucket and then be reused. I might not use the hardscape. My hardscape's getting kind of thrashed in here. Um, lots of algae on it and stuff like that. It'd be just about as easy to kind of like take this stuff out 
and uh, replace it with other rocks because I have I have lots of rocks and wood. <laughs> I am going to reuse uh, probably 100% of the plants that are in here uh, and a lot of the fish that are in here now will be returning to here when I'm done. So another key ingredient that kind of makes this work, now you don't have to use it for this scenario, we'll be using it to make some other kind of uh, different types of filter material. But another one that came up with Kevin's videos is kitty litter. No, 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 come back, come back, come back. I, I promise, I promise, no, no, it, it'll be good, come back. This is a very specific brand of kitty litter. You can get it at Walmart. It's a bait kitty litter, it has no perfumes in it, it does not clump, and basically it acts just like, uh, just like kind of a very fine substrate. It's not really weird or gross. In fact, here I am uh, working with it earlier. Uh, here we have the Special Kitty Natural Clay Fragrance Free. It's a 25 pound bag. I'm not sure any of this like really matters for our purposes. Uh, I did find some clay kitty litters other places, but this, this spe specific combination, like the non-clumping I'm not sure that that's, I'm not sure that that's important, but it kind of seems like it could be non-clumping because we don't want it to like turn into mush when it gets wet. We want it to just remain clay and not turn into a big pile of mess. So, um, I could only find this at Walmart. There might be other practical, uh, other practical things that you could use instead, but since this is what has been widely regarded as, as the stuff to use, I decided just to go with that and keep it simple. And uh, I'm gonna go rinse it out right now. Just like I always do with my bucket here with the holes in it. Uh, like I wash out any other substrate, we're gonna rinse that out and get it ready. Here's a look at it dry. Uh, doesn't really look like anything. Small granules there cat litter. Doesn't smell or anything. Of course it's fragrance free. It doesn't seem too dusty. Eh, there's a little dust in there. <laughs> Let's rinse it out. Okay, here it is post rinse. I probably did not rinse it enough, but it's still pretty granular. Uh, it's a little clumpier than it was before, but it's for the most part it's you know, it still looks like uh, most any other substrate that you'd see. It's a little bit more, it's got a little bit more <laughs> dust and stuff to it. Uh, but I'm not going to use a whole lot of it, just enough to kind of make the filter work. So we'll see. So my plan for this is I'm, after I pull out all the substrate and the plants and the rocks and everything else, I'm going to put the uh, under gravel filter down and I want to put a very small amount of this stuff on top of it. Now what people typically do with biokinesis filtration, which is what I believe this is called, is they'll add a layer of laterite or something else that kind of has an iron supplement to it. That iron is going to help establish bacteria. It's sort of a food for established bacteria. Laterite is like nearly impossible to find. You can use fluorite red. Uh, the red in it indicates a high iron content. I don't have any fluorite red, <laughs> but I am using an aquarium gravel that should have quite a bit of bacteria in it. So this has been going for many, many months. So I think the the, the bacteria that's already in the substrate now uh, will be more than enough to kind of uh, feed into the cycle and kind of get things going. However, there is something I haven't seen anyone else mention, and that is red clay. This is something I got in my aquarium box a while ago. I actually have two of these little bags. This is red clays and it's just a powdered version of the Mexican red clay uh, where I first heard about that with Dustin's fish tanks and uh, the dirted tanks and stuff like that. People would put that in there to kind of add some iron content, possibly because it, the bacteria feeds off that as well. And uh, also it helps your plants, your red plants really use this, this iron. Because it's very high in iron content, it is a great supplement and somewhat easier to find than some of the other things. I'm probably gonna include a little bit of this. In fact, I, I typically do include a little bit of this into the bottom of my aquariums, the very first layer. 
But it's gonna come even more in play when we make some biokinesis baskets, which are gonna be some projects that we do a little further down the road. Uh, things that we can add to the Megaflex, things that I can add to this new tank. Uh, just a little something extra to help prevent algae. It's been kind of a new and exciting rabbit hole to go down. Uh, thinking about uh, anoxic filtration and, and all the kind of different options you have for it. You don't have to do a plenum uh, to do this. I'll, I talked to him a little bit in the comments and uh, he said that, yeah, you can add, if you have a sump or something like that, you can just add this to the sump. We're gonna do that downstairs uh, on the 210. And of course I've got all these, I've got all these uh, aquariums with like the filtration built in, like the, the aquarium over here, I keep pointing to it. But like the brand new uh, aquarium that I just built recently, we've got that one, and uh, I've got the Megaflex, I've got the uh, the Spec 16. They all have those like compartments in the back that are could be you know could feasibly include an extra filter. So we'll be making those and look for that in a future video sometime soon. Okay, so I guess I've put it off long enough. It's time to start taking this down and. Uh, Get in it ready for a new beginning. Here we go. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into like a whole lot of detail on the undergravel filters. I will just kind of show you the panels. It comes with these panels. It comes with some different uh, little connectors. This has some little tabs at the bottom and what this particular one does is uh, you can put this in here. So this can kind of go in here somehow or another, yeah kind of goes in there and then you can kind of twist it to lock it into place and that'll be locked down. And I'll be using this, uh, I'll be attaching a hose to this and I'm gonna run it to this corner filter. Uh, this has a foam corner filter with a pump behind it and the heater's kind of back there too. So it's kind of like a, a sump within the tank almost. So my hope is that by running, uh, and also to note too, also to note, um, these seem to go uh, not quite full front to back. There's a little bit of a gap there. And it doesn't go all the way across, which really helps me out because, uh, of course, this thing sticks out quite a ways on the side. So uh, I should be able to easily fit this in here uh, with the corner filter without it being a big deal. I, I guess it was meant to kind of have a big gap uh, around the edges, probably for aesthetics. This has a pretty fine uh, opening. Most substrates, I think sand will probably go through here. Most substrates probably won't. I brought some window screen up here and this is what I've been using on my terrariums like uh, to cover that one layer of my terrariums. But I think that this will be good enough on its own without anything else because I'm not using sand. Uh, the cat litter, it, I, I, think it's, um, I think it's big enough to where the, it's not gonna go through here. Certainly the uh, the other stuff that I'm using, the aqua soil and stuff, that's not gonna go through here either. So I think uh, this should be good to go once I get everything pulled out, which is gonna be a while. Okay, so aside from my aquascaping materials, I have just about everything I need up here. I have a host of buckets. <laughs> uh, I have my substrate, my kitty litter substrate that I'm gonna use and uh, the rest of the substrate's gonna be just kind of reused out of here. I just need to uh, put a little some water in some buckets so that I can store the plants and the fish. I'm not doing a gravel back or anything. I'm just gonna make, try to get the cleanest water I can out of here. I'll also be putting this back in. Uh, I'm purposely not, I, there will be a gravel vacuum stage, but I'm purposely not doing that with the majority of this water because I want it, uh, I want to reuse it. I want to just put it right back in there. And now I kind of have to pee. It's definitely important to, if you're going to reuse your water, it's definitely important to do that, to get your water first before I pull out any plants or go chasing anything around. Uh, it's really, really hard to see these guys once it gets all dirty and messy in here. So I'm probably gonna try to net out as many as I can beforehand. I've got my big nets. I'm gonna have to pull out the gotcha stuff that they're gonna hide in, like some of these rocks and other things. 
Uh, this is a huge tube and it'd be great if I could just kind of siphon a couple of them up, but they've, so far they've been too smart for that. <laughs> what I might do, uh, if I'm real lucky, maybe I could siphon up a couple of them. Uh, but what I might do, and I have to be real careful too, I just sucked up some algae. But, uh, uh, you know, I think this is about as far as I want to go because I'm not going to really be able to get my net in there. Uh, they've got a lot less places to run though, uh, already. Now I don't have every bucket I own up here, but it's pretty darn close. <laughs> and I'm going to take one of them and I'm going to very carefully start removing the rocks and big things that will get in my way when I try to net them out. I say very carefully because I don't want to disturb the substrate and make it so I can't see in here. Or anything like that. I just want to get it out of the way. Okay, now the very difficult task of apprehending some of these tiny little fish. Um, to make it a little less fair, <laughs> I'm going to be using these giant nets. And that's part of the reason I wanted to get a lot of these rocks and gravels and things out. Okay, so I've got almost every fish out of here. I say almost, there's one sparkling grommy that has just eluded me all this time. I almost caught him twice, but I just am not able to catch him for some reason. So what I'm doing now is I'm removing the plants very slowly, just as slowly as I can uh, to see if I can uncover them somewhere underneath all this stuff. What I'm hoping is he'll run to one side or the other and I can nab him up in a net and be done with the catch. All right, so the plants are out, fish are out, and I'm left with basically just a bunch of dirt that I'm gonna dig up I'm going to fill up my three gallon bucket with this stuff and uh, we'll go from there. See what we're going to keep and what we're not. I do need to get most of this bear. I need to get that most of this emptied out in bear so I could put the, uh, so I could put that uh, under gravel filter in here. Hopefully that won't be too hard. I have a feeling it's going to be kind of difficult. So here we are again. I fished most of the substrate over here to this side. Because, of course, I'm going to have to stop. I have a hard stop, like, right here where the corner filter begins. Okay, so with your under gravel filter, it has these tabs. And basically, these bend away. I had to kind of cut mine off because they don't snap off too well. But they sort of bend away, and they provide a pathway from one of these to the other. And they have these little uh, these little locking things that fit, that fit on these little sections in between where the tabs pull out and kind of hold this thing together. You're gonna to want to do that so the water can flow throughout the whole bottom. We're gonna go ahead and stick it into place. I guess I'll get my CO2 out of the way. So if you want to use sand or something really fine, uh, you're gonna to need to cover this so it doesn't just flow straight through here and kind of uh, mess up what you're trying to create, which is this void underneath. Uh, I've cut some window screen. This would not work for sand, but I think it'll work for some of the clay and uh, the regular uh, substrate that I just pulled out. I think it's going to work just fine for that. And uh, I've cut a piece. It's not perfectly, <laughs> doesn't fit perfectly over this, but I think it'll be just enough to where uh, it'll do what I need it to do. Not perfectly, of course, but it'll, it should work. All right, I'm gonna go in with the cat litter. Let's make a thin sheet right on top of this stuff. I'm not gonna use a lot of it because I mainly, mainly wanna use what I had before. But I'm gonna include it just to try it, just to kinda of add it to the mix. A very thin layer at the bottom. It's not super attractive as substrates go. Kind of gray. I'm also going to do some of this uh, dust here. My hands are soaking wet, but let's see if I can 
can do this without messing it up. I'm just going to generously put some of this all across the bottom of this here. Got a little bit of a layer of that going. And the rest of this will be uh, my substrate from before, right back in there. This is a mix of fluorite dark and uh, aqua soil, if I remember correctly. Some sort of soil substrate. I'm trying to be careful not to uh, <laughs> not to get it all over the floor. Okay, so I found this piece of hose. It's pretty thick. I'm not sure what the diameter is. It was bought for some project long ago, but ironically, it does fit almost perfectly in the top of this. I'm gonna bend this around. It's pretty tight too. I'm gonna bend this around and I'm gonna stick it into the sponge filter. I just need to put the sponge filter in place, back in place in the corner over here. I'll put the corner filter back in place over here and I'm going to run run this tubing from the under gravel filter into there. I'm going to have to cut a slit or something to get it to fit in there. I've had this sponge filter actually uh, soaking in some water. I'll put it, work it back into place. CO2 is not doesn't need to be in there. Pull that out. That kind of wedges in there. These little glass panes kind of keep it in the corner right there. Let's see, make sure this is locked the way I want it to be. Okay. Put some tube in there. Right? I just need to put it right through here. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Stuff's not hard to work with. Hopefully I'm not compromising its effectiveness too much, but I do have a canister on here as well. It's basically been a pre-filter, although I'm sure it provides some sort of filtration on its own, in its own way. Ah, there we go. <laughs> okay, now we've got it sort of plumbed into the sponge filter here. Let me get you a closer look. All right, so there we cut the, the lift tube there, and it's just kind of shoved directly into the sponge filter. That's going to go into here. You see where the tube comes out. And then down below there, uh, there'll be water being sucked into the, into the canister filter. So... There should be uh, a little bit of a draw on this tube, but hopefully not so much that it'll cause it to, um, to move too quickly because we want it to be kind of a slow draw through there. Uh, if it ends up seem, seeming to be a little too much, I can always kind of plug up the end of that with something, maybe put some foam in the end of that or something, but I'm not sure how I'll know <laughs> if it's actually too much. I guess maybe that'll be a Something that I try if maybe the plants don't grow too well or, or I run into some other issue. We'll have to play that by ear. All right, I'm gonna jam my CO2 in here just kind of right behind that thing. Kind of move this dirt over a little bit. Even things out just a little bit. It's time for the fun part. <laughs> We're actually aquascape. I brought up a lot of wood that I've used in other Aquascapes. This is all stuff from my stash that hopefully will sink. I'm just going to kind of mess with it some. Try to avoid showing the cut ends. I like to show the groovy parts, but not the parts that are obviously cut. And uh, with this, I'm, gonna, I'm leaving some space for some plants. I'm going to plant a bunch of plants back here in that back area. And as I put these in, I'm going to integrate some rocks just in case they want to float. 
just in case they want to give me a hard time and try to float out of there. I didn't really have much wood. I had one knot of wood over on the side before. We're going to try and go a little further than that. Integrate as much as I can in here. A lot of these are really super old pieces of wood that have been in a couple of different aquascapes. I'm just going to layer in some rocks too. Try not to be too obvious that they're just to sort of keep these things from floating away. Some of these rocks are like this one is brand new and hasn't been in an aquascape yet. Others came from the the one that I just tore down. Some of these small ones did. I'm just going to put a few more rocks down here just to kind of so it doesn't just go to nothing. Really like the way it looks though. There's a lot of energy in that. A lot of a lot of movement with all these different pieces of wood. I'll get a close up. I'll bring the camera in a little closer right before I plant to just kind of feel my way around here to see what I want from this stuff. Yeah, a lot of the colors of these pieces are way different too. <laughs> but sometimes it comes out okay. What I love about Dragonstone is you can just kind of like boop pop it in and you get a nice little spiky outcropping of of stone that looks neat and dramatic. Now I'm just kind of going to look looking to see what kind of feels right. I'm trying to imagine plants in between these. What that would look like. Stick some of these smaller pieces in the front. Just kind of sticking out. Spikes sticking out of the ground. I'm trying to make Trying to break it up some. I have this huge piece. I think I'll just let this one go. That's got to be enough hardscape. All right, so there's my very quickly done hardscape. I'm kind of running out of time. Like I don't want to rush this. I want to. I want to really enjoy it. But my, my fish have been sitting in there for a while. I didn't put an air stone or anything in there. So, uh, and I don't want the bacteria to die, both in the filter and the sponge and the substrate. I want all that to, to continue on and make this kind of a quick jump start aquarium. So I'm going to go ahead and get the plants in there and, uh, and finish this up. Probably the first plant to go in is going to be a uh, Vesuvius sword. This is a cool curly sword plant. And I'd like it to take up the space in the back if I could. We've got a bunch of it, and it'll be great for covering up my little piping that I did. But I've got to clean up all the stuff that I pulled out of the old tank. Well, it's actually kind of hard to believe that I had this many plants in here. I've got buse, tons and tons of buse. Uh, but I've got piled up over here to put in. And I've got, uh, and I've just, I've just been sorting it out, sorting out the plants out of the bucket. And this much more of the uh, Vesuvius sort of put in. So I guess I need to kind of pull this out so I can see what I'm doing and, and uh, finish planting this up. All right, I've got all the plants in and uh, I poured in it my first bucket of, of water from the, from the last aquarium for what this was before. And it wasn't like, it was a pretty, uh, pretty muddy bucket of water. Looks like it's going to be a pretty dirty setup at first, but uh, hopefully it'll clear up and look nice. Let's put some more water in here. Okay, and here it is. It's been a couple of days uh, since I set this one up, and I'm pretty happy with it. It looks a lot different than it did before. Uh, it's not quite a, there, not quite as many plants uh, as there were in there before. I trimmed a lot of stuff out. I definitely think it's got good bones, uh, a lot of good potential. I've left some spaces empty in case I want to transfer some other plants and kind of try them out in here and see how they do. It's very much an experiment. I'm not about to uh, rip up all my aquariums to put plenums in there, but I did want to try it at least once just to kind of see how it goes. I'm not a scientist or a biologist. I've said that many times. Uh, so uh, most of my experience is just trying things. I, I think as a, as a hobbyist, we only grow when we try new things. 
Uh, by and large, I set up most of the aquariums I've set up, especially recently, have been set up pretty much the same way every time, and I really wanted to just try something else. Now, as far as the deep substrate, I've got another aquarium over here. It's uh, it's the one I set up. Uh, it initially had like a sand waterfall. Uh, it is the one I set up on the scraping from scraping with scraps challenge. The waterfall didn't last very long, and I'll do kind of a mini update before we uh, before we tear into it. But if if you want to take a quick look at it, it's another aquarium that uh, seems to have a lot of potential. The plants are growing in there pretty well, but it's got um, it's got a uh, quite a bit of hair algae. Now it's a pretty new aquarium. It's one of my newer ones. Uh, besides this now, <laughs> it's one of my newer aquariums, and um, it's not unusual to have those kind of issues early on, but I might, I think in that one I am going to just, I'm going to throw a couple of inches of sand on top. Uh, what I've heard is two inches is, is the minimum for a cap with that sand, and we'll probably try that at a minimum, because I really didn't put a lot of, uh, I didn't really put a lot of substrate in there. It's got some sand in it already, but I'm just going to probably take some pull filter sand or I might take the like the nicer, a little bit darker sand. Uh, I've got a bunch of that left, but I don't know if I've got enough to like really cap it. I'm going to take a little closer look at that and see. Uh, I might just kind of go for it and stick that in there and see how far we get. I, what I don't want to do is like mix the expensive sand with the really cheapo pull filter sand because that would feel kind of silly. So there's other types of anoxic filtration that uh, Dr. Novak talked about. And uh, there are things that you can put in your sump and uh, uh, maybe in the back of these compartments for like these multi, uh, these multi built-in filtration tanks that have little compartments in the back. So the next video either is going to be uh, me doing the sand, which that's probably what I'll do. Is I'll do that'll be a nice easy one to do. <laughs> be me doing the sand uh, tank, but I'm also going to work on some of these other anoxic filters and uh, show you some cool stuff that maybe I mean it's the kind of stuff that's so cheap. You know why not try it, right? Uh, they take a long time to take effect, so I won't be able to kind of immediately give you results, especially like with this thing here. It might be a while before I know uh, how well this really works, but that's what the updates are for, and I will give you an update every six months, bare minimum. In fact, we're getting pretty close. I think after this next series of videos, we'll start with some updates again and start looking around at some of the other uh, aquariums and how they've been. I like how this came out. It, it's not, uh, it looks, I like, it's got a lot of edges to it. I, I like that I can see a lot of hardscape. I don't typically, especially when I redo a tank, I don't typically see a lot of hardscape because I have so many plants to contribute. This time I resisted bringing plants in from everywhere else. I just kind of took the best of what it already had in there and just put it back. It's also the first time I've reused substrate. Uh, like pull the substrate out, kind of made some adjustments and then just put it back. So as well as the first time with the under gravel filter or with the and with the cat litter and everything else. So it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see how this works out. This tank is now mostly Vesuvius sort and Buse, like a couple of different flavors of Buse. I didn't realize quite how much Buse I had in that tank. Uh, there was a lot of like individual pieces and I had to trim it down quite a bit because a lot of it had been ravaged by uh, by some algae and stuff. These pieces were in the 15 gallon that used to sit over here. Uh, they were in the 15 gallon flex and they had uh, neurite snails. They had a couple of neurite snails in there and they just laid eggs on everything. I probably could have scraped them off, but they actually, they look kind of interesting. Uh, I'd much rather have it on the wood than the glass. But yeah, some of the, a lot of the wood in here is bespeckled with neurite snail. Uh, eggs, which is kind of interesting. I have turned the CO2 off for a couple of days just to kind of let things settle in here. Uh, I got some kind of wild readings, like it did have a bit of an ammonia spike. I did some pretty heavy water changes and I gave, uh, added in some good bacteria. In fact, this is empty now. I need to get some more. I added in some good bacteria and uh, did some water changes and stuff to kind of help mitigate all that. And it's starting to calm down now. It's much better today than it was yesterday. I'll keep an eye on it. We'll report back and we'll see how it goes with this thing. So I'm going to, get, I'm going to put a subscription circle 
at the end of my uh, video for Dr. Novak, and there'll be there'll be a link to his channel in the description if you're curious and you want to check out uh, more on the what he has to say. And I think that's all I got for you this week. Until we meet again, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Kitty litter. Oh, no, wait, 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 come back, come back. Uh, kitty litter will work. It's gonna be, it's gonna be all right. I think you're gonna work. But this part, <laughs> Mises baskets, which are some projects. Now what, what people typically, yeah. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about uh, agnostic, <laughs> agnostic, ugh. I bought this under gravel filter online. What, wait, 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 come back, come back. No, honestly, it, it's gonna work out, just trust me. It's gonna be fun.